Hi all, this is Tim Olson of Evolution Software. In this demonstration, we're going to show you some steps we would go through to repurpose an existing file. In this case, we have a 3D printable wrench that we would like to replace the text with our website. The file that we're going to start with is found on Thingiverse, and the original designer is Barspin, and it is titled Fully Assemblable 3D Printable Wrench. And if you want to get the files, you can find them on Thingiverse. Okay, so let's begin our design by importing an existing model that we'll modify to meet our design requirements. And we're going to go to the file open and we're going to uh, look at the uh, step files that are included with the printable wrench uh, example files. And we're going to choose the printable wrench no support uh, version of the file. And let's go ahead and import it and bring it in and check out what we have. Uh, to examine the file in terms of what parts we have, I usually like to go to Concept Explorer and go over to the uh, Entities tab and it'll display all the parts. If it's not showing your parts, uh, it may be because you have the Select option only showing where you'll need to right click inside of it and turn off Selected Only. Okay, the uh, next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to orient our part so that our text is along the x-axis. And to do that, I will uh, select uh, all three of our parts and display the transformation tool palette and select the second icon, the rotate uh, three points icon. And then I'm going to zoom up and I'm using the wheel button uh, of my mouse to scroll up and down and we're going to select the center of rotation, a point uh, along the axis that we want to align, and then we'll use Logi Cursor to align it with the uh, x-axis by selecting the intersection point and just uh, pressing the mouse button to accept it, and our three parts are then aligned uh, to it. The uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on uh, the gripper and I like to use the gripper to uh, translate, rotate along axes and let's enable the gripper and let's uh, turn always visible on. Then let's uh, pick our three parts again and we'll move them into the positive XY uh, coordinate system just because I'm used to working there. And now we'll zoom up on our part and let's start doing some modifications uh, to it. First modification we're going to do is we're going to remove the 3D printed text uh, imprinted on, on the part. And to do that, since this is a solid model, we're going to remove faces uh, with the deep select tool. Let's zoom up on the uh, faces and select some of the faces and you can go to the cut command or you can go to uh, select them and just use the delete key from your keyboard. That's what I typically use, it's pretty fast to use. Alright, next we're going to um, we're going to remove the uh, recessed area of our of our wrench uh, and replace it with a different slot. Now if you uh, look in the side view and and display it in wireframe. This slot is going down half the, uh, the width of the wrench and what we're going to do is we're going to create a slot that goes down a quarter of it from the top and then a quarter from the bottom. So let's go ahead and remove those faces and again we'll use our deep select tool and this time we'll use the shift key and individually pick the faces. And we'll start off with the blends on the bottom and then the blends up on top and don't forget the face that's in the middle of the of the wrench and I'll use the delete key and I'll have them removed. Now as I mentioned we're going to replace it with a, uh, a new slot and I want the slot width to be the diameter of this circle here and to examine that value I'm just going to uh, right click over the circle and then it will tell us, hey, it's a radius of, of four millimeters. So our slot width is going to be eight millimeters. 
And so let's go over to our slot tool out of our polygons. And I'm going to reference this uh, point on the top face. And that'll set the, the depth of, of our slot. And let's just create uh, any slot because we're going to modify this. All right. And now we'll go ahead and put in our new value. Our, our diameter is 4 millimeters, the radius. So our width will be 8 millimeters. Now let's go ahead and select our slot with the gripper and we'll position it uh, approximately where we want it to go. And while it's selected, I'm going to go to the uh, show points and I want to show some of the handles of the slot. Pick one of those handles and I want to just extend the slot out. Likewise, I'm going to extend the slot the other direction. We have a lot of text that we're going to be filling in there, so we'll make it a nice and large. And then lastly, you can go ahead and center your, your slot with respect to the, to the hole. All right, so I mentioned that we're going to do a slot on top and a slot on the bottom. So let's make this, uh, let's tech copy our profile that we just made, our, our slot profile, down to the bottom face. And to do that, we're going to select the Translate tool. And we'll select our slot. And now we'll hold the Option or the Control key if you're on the PC and copy it to the bottom face. And to reference uh, points to get it to the bottom, I'm going to select the top, top quadrant and the bottom quadrant. And now if we flip this over, you can see our slots on the bottom. Okay, next let's go ahead and do a cutout. We're going to take our slot and we're going to cut out material from our wrench. And to do that we'll use the uh, cutout solid tool where we will select the solid, select the profile or cutout that you want to have removed, and then we're going to specify a vector. And the vector that we're going to use is we're going to use it. We're going to extract it from the the, the vertical component of from Logi cursor, which would be the the uh, quadrant of this arc down to the center of the arc. And then we'll go ahead and do the same thing on the bottom. Uh, let's turn it into a wireframe, and so that we can see uh, our slot relative to the solid. And we'll select the solid, and we'll select the uh, slot. And uh, we'll do the same thing, only this time we're going to pick the quadrant bottom up to the center point. And the slot is made, and let's just confirm it looks good. It does. And now let's go ahead and continue on by putting blends uh, onto the, uh, to the slot that we just made. Now we're going to put a blend on the top face and a blend on the uh, inside face. And to calculate that blend radius, I'm just going to select this uh, line right here to, to, to find out what that length is. And that length is uh, 2 millimeters. So we're going to use a 1 millimeter radius on top and a 1 millimeter radius on the bottom. So let's go ahead to the data entry window and type in 1. And we'll select any edge here. And likewise, let's do the bottom. And then let's go ahead and do the uh, bottom side as well. There we go. And uh, lastly, let's do this blend on the whole. All right, next we're ready to place our text on our, our wrench. And to do so, we're going to uh, create some text in the top view. And the top of will say punchcad.com. And the bottom will say insane CAD incredible value. And we're going to use all caps letter on the bottom to get a wider text. And we're going to use uh, Arial Black because that also gives us a wider text. When we're 3D printing text, you have to be concerned about the width of your text to meet uh, certain wall thickness requirements. All right, let's slide this down just a little bit. And let's go ahead and extrude our text now. And we're going to go to the Extrude tool. And we're going to extrude by distance. And we're going to extrude this uh, two millimeters. That's what the, the depth of our recess was. And let's do both of the uh, upper and lower. And now let's position our text on the bottom face. And I'll use the Translate tool and the gripper to do that. Uh, let's go ahead and select our text. And we're going to select this lower left corner of the text. And we're going to put it. Let's put it right in the center there. 
All right, and then while it's still selected, let's jump back over into the top view and let's position it on that face. Okay, likewise, let's do the same thing for the bottom text. Uh, the bottom text is on the other side, so uh, we're going to have to reverse it. So let's slide it over here a little bit and then let's uh, rotate it about that axis 180 degrees. And now we're ready to uh, locate it. And let's see where we're going to get a point to look grab. Okay, it looks like a there's a point over here. Let's let's do it there. So we're going to take that text and translate. Let's get an endpoint. That endpoint to that point. And then we're going to have to um, position it in that face. We we'll use the gripper to do that. And we are going to be too big. But let's go ahead and, and position it in there. And now one of the interesting things, the text that we extruded from the original uh, text, it's associative. So if we go back over to the text, let's size this down a little bit you'll see our text over here is uh, adjusting for us. We still need to get a little bit smaller. There, that looks that looks like that'll just fit. And let's grab it and let's push it in there a little bit further. All right, that looks good. Now let's go back into our shaded mode and let's uh, do a, a add solid uh, between the text and the wrench. So let's pick our wrench and let's pick our uh, punch CAD text. Likewise, let's do the same thing with the text on the bottom. Okay, uh, one more item that, that uh, I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, I'm going to put some small blends across the top of our text. And let's see, let's make it, uh, let's try 0 0.5 millimeters. Let's see what that looks like. That's good. So we're just going to pick all of these faces and we're going to do what's called a face blend and that happens if you select just the face, not the edge. It will then grab all of the edges associated with that face. And I like this one for uh, capping off uh, fonts, especially with fonts having so many edges. Okay, one more. And if you like, you can do the bottom text too. I'm, I'm not going to do that in, in the demonstration. All right, so we are getting close to printing. And I think what I'd like to do next is uh, I like to uh, check some distances between my, my parts. And the first distance that I'm going to check is my screw here. And a real quick way to check your clearance between these two parts is to select the two parts and go to the Verify uh, Minimum Distance uh, tool. All right, and this shows that we've got a 0.126 clearance between these two parts at this location. So that's going to be the tightest spot. And I actually printed this wrench, and this was what I experienced uh, where the tightness was in my part. And I had to, I had to get a screwdriver in to, to pry this out. It's, it's tight there. Now, if you want to make more room, let me show you a way uh, that you can do what you can do. And that's using the uh, offset tool. And let's see. Let's go ahead and pick our offset tool. And what this does is this will move or offset a face a specified amount. Here we go. And we're going to offset it. Uh, let's go. We're going to remove material. So let's put a negative on it. 0 0.05 millimeters. And then you can just pick the faces that you want to offset that amount. OK, so we moved it just a tad. Now if we go back and do our minimum distance, we have a little bit more space there. All right, let's go ahead and create our stereolithography model now, our STL file. And let's turn off, let's hide everything 
and then let's just show solids. This is a quick way I have for just displaying solids. And uh, let's uh, export our file to an STL. I'm going to use a binary and my units will be millimeters. And uh, let's go ahead and specify our file. We'll call it the VCAD wrench. And uh, for the mesh parameters, so I'll usually go down to a forward, four degrees for the normal deviation. And for the edge length, uh, I'm going to go at uh, 0.5. That's 0.5 mil millimeters. And uh, let's tell it to get us an estimated count. And we're around 600,000 facets. And the mesh looks pretty nice. So I'm going to go with that. And now I'm going to go ahead and upload my file to Shapeways, and let's go ahead and get a cost estimate to print this file. Okay, so I went ahead and I took our, our STL and I've uploaded it into Shapeways. And uh, first thing I usually do when I upload my files into Shapeways, I want to confirm the size and to make sure my units are okay and I don't have anything unusual going on there. And so I can see uh, by the size check that yes, this is exactly eight inches by two by by a little over half an inch in, in height. And it's passed all of their checks. And using the white uh, material, white uh, st strong and flexible plastic, it's about $29 uh, dollars to, to make this part. And so I've gone ahead and I've actually uh, made this part, had it delivered. And let's go ahead and, and take a look at it. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like more information regarding ViaCAD, please visit www.punchcad.com. If you'd like access to the files that were used to create the printable wrench, visit thingiverse.com and check out some of the designs by Barspin. Thank you.